Hey guys, welcome back. In the 12th lesson of the official Bolt series, we're going to set up our pause menu for our platformer. What I wanna happen is whenever I press the escape key in my case, I want to pause the game and show the pause menu that will allow you to resume, um, quit the game, or go back to the main menu. So we're gonna add that functionality in. Now what I wanna do is in the heads up display scene here on pause menu, by default, we're gonna go ahead and enable that so we can work with it easy. And to handle this, we're going to set up another state machine that will allow us to decide if our game is playing or if our game is paused. And if the game is paused, then nothing should be moving, nothing should be, uh, no physics should be happening in the background, that kind of thing. And if the game is playing, well, everything should be working normally, just fine. So we're going to do that on the heads up display object here. So I'm going to add a state machine to our heads up display object. And this is gonna be an embedded state machine. So just embedded directly in the machine or the graph is embedded rather. What I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna rename the start state to be something like play. So while in this state, the game is playing normally. And then I wanna add another flow state here and I wanna call this paused. So this is what's happening when the game is paused. And I wanna be able to transition from the playing state to the pause state and then back from the pause state to the playing state. So I'm gonna hold down the control key, drag to paused, and then from paused, holding control, back to playing. Very simple. So first of all, let's set up what happens whenever the game is paused. All I care about for this is whenever we enter the state, so get rid of those two events. When the game is paused, I simply wanna set the time scale to be zero, which means anything that relies on time will not be moving, will not be doing anything, which in our case is everything that matters. So virtually our game is gonna be entirely paused. So I wanna say set time scale and simply set it to zero. I also want to show the menu. So what I'm gonna do is say game object set active. So we're going to enable the menu if it was disabled, right? So I'm going to enable the menu by dragging the pause menu straight into that field just like that from the hierarchy, right into the object field. And I'm gonna say that it is activated by clicking the value to true. So now the menu is shown whenever we pause. The playing state's going to be the exact opposite of the pause state. So what I can do is take this, copy it, come into the playing state, delete all this and paste it in. Control C, then Control V. And I'm gonna set that to false and then set the time scale to one. So we're back to moving and the menu is now gone. So to transition from playing to paused, I want to hit the escape key, which is going to pause the game and then bring up the menu. That just makes sense. It's very typical. That's how it usually works. So in the transition to paused, double click on that. And I want to trigger this transition if the escape key is pressed. So on keyboard input, and the keyboard input that I'm looking for is going to be the escape key. So it's right above space here, so escape. And then whenever the escape key is down, so the flow is gonna come from that whenever the escape button is pressed and we're gonna trigger the transition to the paused state. And now to get back from paused to playing, I wanna be able to press the escape key again, maybe to resume the game or click the resume button. So open this up and the way I'm gonna do this first, again, just do the escape key. So on keyboard input, looking for escape, down, pass that in. But I also want to trigger the transition if we clicked the resume button. Now resume button is right here under buttons in the pause menu and you have resume button. And now whenever I click on that, it's going to fire off an on click event for the button. But we're going to be listening to that directly on the resume button button itself. But one cool thing about the way events work in Bolt is from one object, I can listen to events on another object. So from the heads up display object here, I can actually react to an event that is happening on resume button without writing anything on resume button. So I can say on button click. And this field here is saying, which button are you looking at? Which event do you care about and on which button? And I don't care about the button for the heads up display object as there isn't one. I care about the one for resume button, right? So all I have to do is drag that and drop it on that field. And now whenever resume button is clicked, this event on the heads up display graph will fire off. So pass that directly into the trigger transition. And I now have the ability to click resume button or hit the escape key to resume the game. So I'm gonna call this one pause and this event 
resume. And lastly, I want to do something whenever the menu button is clicked and whenever the quit button is clicked. So whenever menu is clicked, we're simply going to load the menu scene. Whenever the quit button is clicked, we're simply going to exit the application, so close the game. So I'm gonna do this directly on the button object. So under menu button, I'm going to add a flow machine. And again, this is gonna be embedded because it's a one-time use graph. We do not care about it elsewhere. On button click once more, but this time it is on self, right? Because we're defining it on the menu button. And it shows you how universal the event system is in Bolt. So on button click for menu button, what happens is I want to load a scene. So I want to say load scene, and I want to load scene by scene name, and I'm looking for menu. And just like that, so whenever the menu button is clicked, we will load the scene by the name of menu, which will be the main menu right here. And now on quit button, I simply want to, again, add a flow machine, again, make it embedded, and then again, add the on button click. And now what I wanna do is whenever we click the quit button is I wanna simply quit the application. So I'm going to say application. Under application, we have quit. So I'm gonna call quit just like that. So now whenever we click the quit button, the application will close. Now we can't test this out unless we actually make a standalone build, but we can test out the other functionality. So in level one here, let's click play. And a good start because we can still move. Hit the escape key and there is the pause menu. Click resume, I get back into the game. Now I can jump in midair, hit the escape key and notice my guy is paused in midair exactly what I would like to happen. Hit the escape key again, then I fall back to the ground. Pretty cool. Then I go to the menu, and here's the main menu. And in the next lesson, we're gonna set this up to work with our unlocked levels to create a new game, and again, to close the application. That is in the next lesson, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you there.